Hey game fans, it's Roberto here doing another unboxing and this time it is Flying Frog Productions Forbidden Fortress from um, the Shadow and Brimstone line and this is the Temple of Shadows expansion. Um, so the deluxe expansion and this uh, continues on in the adventures of the Forbidden Fortress where was basically the Asian adventure um, where uh, you had four characters that you had from the core box of the Forbidden Fortress. And this, um, I feel, uh, in the first, with the original Shadow of Brimstone, you had two deluxe core boxes, right? Um, this one looks like you got one deluxe core box and a deluxe expansion. So this isn't as big as your core box. You, you need the core box to play still. But this adds um, four extra characters and some more, uh, more map pieces and more of everything. But anyways... On the cover here, it looks like uh, you got your new adventurers and your new heroes and some new monsters. So there's a lot of everything that you need um, to play in the game, but it doesn't have all the cards and dice and the rules. But it does have, you know, new more miniatures, more characters, more villains, and just more fun. So um, on the side here, looks like a, a good piece of art. It's got some monsters, so... If Flying Frog does something right, man, they they have a lot of art in their uh, in their newer games, which wasn't you know even um, that wasn't even the case in the in the older games like in their Zombies line they had art, but it was mostly um, it was fun because there was a lot of just like pictures of people in costumes, uh, you know, doctored up. But this is like a hundred percent like painted art, so very uh, very cool. Um, on the back, you got the contents of the box, so uh, another piece of art as well, and it looks like some map tiles, cards, and miniatures, so let's see what it says. Uh, the Temple of Shadows. Sweeping across the fields and mountains of Japan, the, uh, the fallen shogun leads the Takobak uh, samurai clan on a war of conquest and his mad thirst for domination. By harnessing the power of the Darkstone, they have laid waste to another uh, clan, another of the clans that dares to challenge them on the field of battle. But they have also have become terribly mutated, growing masses of tentacles from their faces and arms. Now the armies of the Takobak uh, scour the temples and castles that have fallen into shadow, searching for sacred relics and ancient artifacts to unlock forbidden knowledge that they need to become unstoppable. Well, sorry if I'm uh, butchering Taco Bake or Taco Bak. I'm not sure how it's how it's uh, pronounced. But anyways, this deluxe expansion of Shadow Brimstone allows players to add the Fallen Shogun and his deadly Taco Bak army to the adventures. It also includes a new temple-themed map tiles for the Forbidden Fortress world, as well as the Belly of the Beast map tiles to expand the living world in addition there are four new hero classes that have joined the fight to hold back the darkness. The Soldier, the Geisha, the Enforcer, and the myth Mythical Kitsune. Ooh. Along with a host of new cards, including an adventure card with let's, uh, that lets players explore a falling temple overrun with Taco Bak, and, we and four new enemy types. There are also six new missions. One, uh, only the most daring heroes can hope to hold back the armies of the uh, Fallen Shogun long enough to unlock the secrets deep within the Temple of Shadows. So, um, if, uh, if basically, uh, Flying Frog does anything right, it's Pulp Adventure, man. They, uh, they get your blood going with, uh, a bunch of cliffhangers and, um, pushing your luck and, uh, getting getting what you need at just the right time with the with the play style and it's it's a lot of fun i really like all of their games i don't know if there's any uh let me think which game didn't come off as much uh as i thought it would maybe it was the the conquest the world's one i think i don't think we played that more than a couple of times but everything else was, has always been a hit um fortune and glory is great um the Zombies game is great. Last Night on Earth. I love that one. That was like our favorite family game for a long time. We played that for years with all the expansions. And I lost it in a move. I don't know where it went. So I'm probably just going to buy it again. Um, regardless, it's pretty sweet. I love the uh, 
I love the Warhammer Quest homage covers that all of these uh, boxes have when they got heroes on it. It's like the heroes, all the heroes um, up against whatever they are, whatever the enemies are in the box. So, very cool. Then, oh man, it's just uh, instructions on how to build all the miniatures in the box, which I kind of like. Um... I don't know, like maybe more art. It's always fun when you get more art, but it's it's neat. At least there's instructions, so can't really uh, knock them for that. Let's see what we got here. I don't know what any of these uh, new villains or heroes are, other than the heroes I just read off. So let's see some bases and um, is this the heroes? I think it might be. Yeah, I think I see a Kitsune a head, and I think I see an umbrella, maybe. I'm not sure. That's a, Yeah, I think it's an umbrella. Um, that might be for the geisha. Got a body, a soldier, or somebody down there. And I don't see the... Oh, the geisha's in the corner. And I think that is the Kitsune body must be a female um female fox so very cool somebody's got what looks like uh a a gun it's pretty nice um yeah awesome and what else do we got oh uh, we got some big something big just yeah okay so, I thought it was two, but it's you just uh, glue them together, and you got one big, looks like hands or something. I don't know. When I get the full color art, I'll know a little bit better as to what I'm looking at. But so far, cool. Got a couple of those. What are these? Ah, all right. These look like some sort of Lovecraftian soldiers. Um, so they got squid faces and got some armor on and it looks like they've got like uh, big spears um, of some sort. Looks like you get six of those and oh these are interesting you got some some lamps with some big tongues on them so those are those are terrifying. Got four, uh, you get 12 of those. So, wow, that was a monster I was not expecting. And looks like you get 12 of them. It's pretty cool. Oh, and here's the big bad, it looks like, because I see some big bases. What do we got? Is this one or two figures? Uh, I guess it's just one. And it looks like it's a, a big, like, Oni samurai of some sort um yeah very cool big warrior lots of armor big big helmet look at that blade that's pretty cool um yeah looks looks pretty sweet he's got a big old big old base to go on looks like he's got a 50 mil then the black and white art and you can feel all the extra stuff underneath so got two packs of cards looks like what do we got here the belly of the beast map and we got some some magic and that that must be elemental magic that must be for either the player characters or some of the villains we got our full color um adventure book which uh flying frog does really well they add little bits of fluff in here, flavor, a um, little bit of story. What it's what if what's missing from um, the uh, Forbidden Fortress line is the comic books. In the back of the uh, first two core boxes, you had some comic book uh, art that really brought it together. Uh, I like the pulp feel of it, but that's this is a. A mission four, and you're straight up in the belly of the beast. So, so look at that. That looks gross. Like pre-constructed map. It's all a bunch of uh, innards. Got some 
some uh, acid pool. That's pretty cool. Ancient hunger. Power of the Shogun. So, um, very neat. So this isn't really an other world because it looks like it covers the same uh, levels of the original Forbidden Fortress with just the fortress and the belly of the beast, but it adds new map pieces to it. So I'm interested to see how that works. Uh, expanding on the Forbidden Fortress. Intended to build uh, to build on the core set several mechanics and game components that okay so it just makes your basic core game bigger which is cool because um i liked adding enemies to my uh, shadow of brimstone mines just the basic set because that was the one that you um that you were in that you mostly started it anyway so that one i felt like could get a little stale easier the other worlds were always cool because there was new enemies but um Anyways, you got a soldier here. Sorry. Rambling and not showing you stuff. The geisha. What does she do? What does she do? She's graceful. She has beauty, theater, and ruthless, huh? Um, starting a comforting laugh. Whether a light giggle or of a geisha or the hearty belly roar of a kabuki, uh, this hero's laughter can break the tension even in the most dire of circumstances. Upgrade allows the geisha to cover grit faster and use the grit to heal the party. Okay, we got the Kitsu. I feel like that's going to be a favorite in uh, my family. Like both my wife and my sister-in-law are probably going to fight over who gets to play the uh, the Fox Warrior. Um, just because that's just how it goes. We're always playing Pokemon no matter what. Um, playing a Kitsune. Kitsune is a powerful, agile fighter. Then you got Pounce, Trickster, and Elemental Spirit. Got uh, the Watcher, the Guardian, the Fighter, and the Deceiver are its uh, skill tree. So, as you can see, it's the same as all the other uh, characters. They have uh, skill trees, and when you level up, you pick new abilities, um, which is always cool. Like, get plus one combat strength. And combat and strength, if you go to Battle Spirit, are flurry of blows. When using grit to re-roll your to-hit roll, add plus one to the rolls. Oh, so yeah. Ooh, look at the Enforcer, man. It looks straight Yakuza on there. Wow. Pretty cool. Um, uh, failure is not an option. Perhaps the most brutal aspect of being the Enforcer comes in the form of harsh sacrifices expected when failing to accomplish the attack. The ability grants the Enforcer with unlimited bravado in the form of recovering grit every turn. They can cost be st the cost can be steep, however, in that every failed adventure requires cutting off a finger, a self-imposed penalty to keep your honor. Over time, the lost fingers can reduce the hero's effectiveness in combat. Wow. Okay. Yep. So he's going to lose fingers over time. Um, I wonder what that does. It just can't hold weapons eventually, probably. Doesn't really tell me in that little blurb. But, a uh, little painting guide. And some uh, another page of painting. So that's pretty cool. And then some alternate stats for your... Uh, the characters from Shadows of Brimstone, like some of the monsters that you can add to them, the Hell, the hell Bats and the Void Spiders, two of the more annoying uh, enemies. So, oh, here we got our our monster cards. So, Chochino Bake, uh, our Chichano Bake Lanterns. So those are the, the tongues, Tongue Lanterns. The Fallen Shogun. Look at this guy. Looks pretty cool. And, like, uh... He's got the brutal side on the back. Let's just take a look at the normal side. Initiative 2, so he's not moving too fast. Excuse me. He's a mutant soldier, uh, Tobak, and he's uh, legendary. Speakable Tear, a hero starting their activation on the same map or adjacent map tile. Dang. <laughs> Even adjacent, you can't run from this dude. Automatically takes two whore hits. Um, Dark Stone Armor, armor plus four. So if you're hitting him, he gets to. Gets the save against the wounds on a four up. Jeez. Um, changes target each turn and all other enemies gain plus one combat shots with their attacks. A ruthless warlord. Uh, all other enemies gain plus one combat shot with their man. Just extra attacks for everybody. Jesus. Uh, dark stone radiation. Hero ending their movement adjacent to uh, takes one corruption hit. So you're just getting hit with. Horror and corruption all over the place. 
um, Brutal Blade, every Shogun hit also does one hit to each other adjacent uh, to each other hero adjacent to the target. Also, sh uh, Shogun to hit rolls of six are negative one defense. Man, this dude is straight up um, hitting like it's the first Warhammer quest. He's just sw sweeping everybody and if he hits you, he's just going to hit whoever's adjacent to you. That's pretty crazy. For the bad guys, that's nuts. Um, and his elite charge. So, it's the War Master plus one defense and tough immune to critical hits. Okay, so this is the skin crawlers. We got looking right out of uh, right out of Stranger Things right there. That's pretty cool. Um, you got the Taco Box Spearmen. So, you got your, your soldiers. And then the heroes. Oh, I like the art. I really like the Enforcer art. That looks really cool. And on the back, the female Enforcer. Um, yep. Uh, range, five. Melee, he hits on a three plus. That's cool. Um, yeah, he's dude's a tank. He's got four strength. Um, high pain threshold. Endurance, four. You may not take more than four wounds from any single hit. Any extra damage is wasted. Oh, wow. Okay, he is just a tank. Mercenary always rolls one extra die when scavenging, dude. He's a scavenger, too. I like the Enforcer. That's really cool. Um, Geisha. We just looked at her a little bit. But what do we got for the Kabuki, huh? That's pretty cool. And the Kitsune. We got the male Kitsune. That's pretty cool. And the Soldier. Female art for the soldier. Soldier real oh the soldier's got the gun. If you do not move during your activation, add plus one shot to any gun you attack with. Oh, so that's cool. So this guy's um would probably be pretty useful even in the um the old West adventure. So that's neat. Um just in case they go to another world with regular guns, you got somebody that's gonna do alright with them. And we got the tiles here. And let's see what we got. Got our intestines and some forbidden fortress tiles. Looks like a sacred relic. Got some uh, some Buddha statues. That's pretty cool. That's gross. <laughs> and we got some some void spider tokens if you don't have any, which is is very nice. Um, we got a big bell. So that's a pretty fun location. Some more gross innards. I like that these are all real big. So that's that's cool. That adds a lot of uh, probably um, a bunch of of uh, rooms that have, probably have special cards that are attached to them. Um, some more gross belly, and looks like a final boss room if I've seen one before. Pretty cool. Then. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of the cards, and then we'll call it. Let's see if I can get this open. But yeah, um, I have not played the uh, Forbidden Fortress yet. I have been really enjoying uh, going to the other worlds in the Shadow of Brimstone. But I figured I'm going to paint up um, the one set of heroes. I might as well just paint all up. This seemed like it's a good... Just add on to that course set anyway. Um, so we got some other world threat cards. These are these are the cards for the monsters that if you're just in the other world, um, what shows up? What is that? You got some oh man, some burst blobs. I love I love a slime monster, so that's uh that's pretty cool. And got our regular world threats, a couple of soldier cards. So the threat cards are normally just uh, your your monster fights. It's the encounter cards that um, have like your traps and and some other stuff. And like, what do we got here? Growing dread. Let's see what's we have? Ruthless destruction. By order of the fallen shogun, no quarter is given to prisoners of war. They are staked or torn apart and left as a gruesome warning to all that would oppose his will. The darkness moved one step forward on the death track. 
if this moves into a blood splatter or a growing space uh, growing dread space every hero also takes d6 wounds ignoring the defense jeez just staking everybody huh um so that is growing darkness and yeah so i like this some art on the darkness card is this dark laughter all heroes roll one less die for any skill test they make. This just remains in play. That is brutal if you're running into a bunch of encounters. Um, they're everywhere. Look at this. See? More cool art. And it says, at the start of the next fight round, add an extra low threat to the fight as an ambush attack. Or a medium threat if you have five or six heroes. So, just, this is where the game, uh, one of the things about the original Warhammer quest that always always gets you always grind me when you when you're kind of getting fatigued and the game's been going a while and somebody's just rolling unlucky it's rolling ones or you draw a card like this because somebody rolled poorly on the it's no and it's nobody's fault everybody just it, you know you keep rolling dice you're eventually gonna just roll a snake eyes and anyways you fail on your darks uh protecting the darkness and more monsters show up or in the old warhammer quest you fail to uh your chaos magic would go crazy and just summon more monsters. And you're just about to finish the fight. You're almost done. And more monsters show up. And everybody's just like, God, I just want to get out of this room and move on. Because we're not even at the last room yet. So, anyways. Those cards kind of, you know, they can grind it. They're okay early on. But the la longer the game goes, it can drive you crazy. Terrifying to behold. Oh, man, look at that. Just a big old uh, intestine worm. Um... All enemies with fear, terror, or unspeakable terror do plus one sanity damage on any horror hits that are, and this remains in play. Wow. It's pretty pretty uh, terrible. And then a map, some map deck cards for the new maps. And they do have, um, it looks like, encounters that are special for for all of them. So that's pretty, pretty fun. Probably really hard, to be honest. Anytime you're stacking up like two encounters, you get unlucky and... And like get a debuff and like a uh, a a monster drawing a, a monster that just explodes and draws another monster. It's like a random encounter can turn into a three tiered fight and you're debuffed and you're just like, oh my god, how do I get out of this mess? Um, hopefully, you got some dynamite. And that's all. Um, so we got some magic cards: uh, fire, water, wind, and earth. So, got some magic, and this looks like some spells for somebody. Um, don't know who. Maybe it's the kid soon, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Didn't really, didn't look too hard. Maybe it's just new spells for your existing uh, magic classes. Got some starting gear. The common knives. That's pretty cool. Shoulder tattoo, man, getting getting inked up to, before you go out to fight. The Outlaw Club, dude, I love this enforcer. This dude is is a hoss. Uh, hidden dagger, the parasol, man, what's the parasol do? Uh, no, uh, no sun, no sun damage. Or right, let's see, once per turn, you may reroll a single failed defense or escape roll. Ignore weather effects. It does ignore weather effects. So, very, uh, very true to life. Um. Got some armor, soldier's armor, six plus and plus two health, and the flintlock rifle. What is it got? Range ten, one shot. Oh no! Use the P dice for plus one damage. Oh, P plus one damage. Hits from this gun may not be assigned to enemies adjacent to you. Man, you're just using the P dice for damage. I want to say the P starts on three, so you're doing at least four damage whenever you shoot this gun, which is pretty nice. Um, only one shot though. Hits from this gun may not be assigned to enemies adjacent to you. Oh. And then we got some belly of the beast encounters. Some passage encounters. Uh, arcing, arcing nerve fiber. I'll read one of these. A massive bundled nerve fiber hangs down uh, onto the floor here. Uh, ripped from its tube-like housing in the fleshy ceiling above. As the raw nerves rise and twist on the ground. Sparks and bolts of electricity arc off of it in all directions. Agility, random, uh, or, yeah, no, it's not random, it's the whole party. Got a five agility test. If successful, gain 10 XP. If you slip past the arcing nerve fiber, 
If failed, you are shocked by an electrical arc as you stray too close. Take D6 wounds, ignoring defense and armor. If more than half the heroes successfully passed the test, you also discover the charred body of another traveler that may, was not so lucky. Each hero may draw a loot card. And he had a lot of loot if everybody gets one. So, anyways, uh, I like the I like the color of the encounter cards here. It's pretty cool. Um, ooh, artifacts. What do we got? The Ranko virus. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Oh no. Uh, we got COVID in the other world. What do we got here? Um, negative three health. You may cancel any status effect marker that you would gain on a D6 roll of four plus. Wow. Cancel any status effect marker that you would gain on a roll of D. Negative three health, but you can get rid of statuses. So if somebody's stunning you, you're like, nah, -uh, I got my, got my shot. So there it is. Flesh, flesh armor. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, guess and it's from the Belly of the Beast armor. Plus two health. You may place to plus up to two status effects markers here during an adventure instead of uh, on yourself. Status effect markers have no effect on you. Discard any markers here at the end of the adventure. Wow. You just got, you got, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pork belly <laughs> armor. <laughs> That's pretty nuts. Uh, what do we got here? Spine glove. You really are just taking pieces of the adventure and making weapons out of it. Paint of the uh, of whatever your rooms you're in. Spine glove. Range four and four shots. Oh my! Uh, shots from the spine glove are negative one on their to hit rolls. To hit rolls of six plus may still count as critical uh, rolls. Four shots though, huh? Wow! And you can. And you can put up to three uh, attachments on it. Man, spine gloves. It's gross. Um, and we'll just look at one more. This is a personal item. It's the worn sandals. Plus one move. Whenever you move, have a move of six or more. Heal one wound of sanity. That's pretty cool. Got some encounters. And artifacts. Got the hell scroll. Read that if you want. And we got some gear. Temple Defender's Banner. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh my god. I seen I seen a rope. I was like, uh oh. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what kind of rope uh action we got in in this one. Uh and side bag. We got Seven token side bag. Whoa. Seven and five. Okay. And then uh adventures. Oh, adventure in the fallen temple. So some extra rules. Uh very cool. Uh this looks like it is going to add a lot of content to the base game and is a uh a lot of fun. Um really really looking forward to to trying out uh the Forbidden Fortress. I am sure uh, I know how it plays since I'm loving um, Shadows of Brimstone as it is in the Old West uh, Lovecraftian version. So will be fun, and I'm pretty sure this will be a hit with my family who uh, who will eat up the the Asian adventures. Um, but regardless, this was pretty cool. Let me know if. Um, if you picked up any of the Shadow of Brimstone, what's your favorite expansions? If you picked up the Forbidden Fortress, do you like it as much as um, the the standard core um, Shadow of Brimstone? I, I'm um, I'm gonna say it's probably like I haven't tried this one, but just on everything I see, it looks awesome. Looks like a lot of um, time and effort went into it to making it look cool. So um, I think I like. Just in general, the Lovecraft um, Old West theme a little bit more. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm proven wrong that the flavor of the uh, Cthulhu Lovecraftian stuff comes through here a bit more because it looks like it's uh, outside of the um, the soldiers with like the uh, the tentacle faces it it looks like but it does it does still use the lovecraft monsters you got those and you got the void spiders but 
it doesn't to me it still doesn't feel as um you know lovecraftian but i'm hope hopefully i'm wrong um because i love the other one regardless this looks like it's a lot of fun uh let me know what you think and uh which one do you like more or if you like them all the same if you just mix them all up i haven't gone that far yet um i don't know if i ever will i like having the expand i like picking out the expansions i want to use with the shadow brimstone just so it's a little more tailored to my taste at the time so i'll probably stick with um all these forbidden fortresses stuff together unless somebody really wants to try them you know mixed up but anyways thanks for watching like subscribe leave a comment talk to you later see you next time bye